أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ غدوت من أهلك تبوئ المؤمنين مقاعد للقتال والله سميع عليم إذ همت طائفتان منكم أن تفشلا والله وليهما وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون ولقد نصركم الله ببدر وانتم اذله فاتقوا الله لعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين from the 13th section of surah al imran now a very long discourse it contains commentary from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the events of the battle of uhud this battle was fought in the month of shawwal in the third year after hijra and when that was actually according to the arabic tradition that because at badr the quraish of bakka had a very bad defeat now they had to take the revenge so they made full preparations an army 300,000 3,000 strong a very big army by the standards of those days well armed well provided it reached the vicinity of madina then there was a consultation held by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his own opinion was that we should defend madina while remaining in the city and not go out the same was the opinion of the chief of the munafiqeen abdullah ibn ubay incidentally he also held the same opinion but the prophet saw sallallahu alaihi wasallam that many a youth especially the young people especially those who had either entered islam after the battle of badr or although they were muslims already before badr but they couldn't go to badr they were very anxious to go and have a direct combat man to man face to face fight and they said we need the shahada martyrdom so why should we go in the open field and confront the enemies of allah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cared for the sentiments that they had and decided finally okay we shall go out and fight the enemy in the open field then he sent forth set forth from madina with 1000 men but after he reached the battlefield abdullah ibn ubay with 300 of his companions he deserted he went back to madina he said when our opinions are not respected why should we risk our lives so now it was a big setback a big shock already they were th- one third in number 1000 were to face 3000 now you know the ratio proportion was reduced to 1/4 now there were only 700 who had to face 3000 strong army well provided well armed anyhow when the fighting began muslims were victorious 
and very soon you know the army of the Quraysh from Mecca they were on their heels they were running off but at that time there was a mistake committed by 30 persons 35 persons of Muslims the Prophet had posted 50 men there was a pass behind the position of the Muslims and there could be that the enemy cavalry could charge through that pass. So Prophet posted وسلم, 50 archers at that place to keep the enemy at bay. But when they saw those 50 people that the battle has been decided and Muslims have got the victory, the enemy uh, forces are running, so they left the place. Although the commander who was posted there he said to them till the last moment, don't leave this place. Remember the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, that you will never in any case leave this place. You will, be, you will remain here. But out of 50, 35, they disobeyed him, they left the place. Khalid ibn Walid was leading the cavalry, a hundred horse strong cavalry they had. He saw that moment and he encircled the mountain and from that pass he charged. And that actually was a very bad moment for the Muslims. The victory changed into defeat. Seventy of the Sahaba were martyred. The Prophet himself was wounded. So this was a big shock to the Muslims. One year after Badr, Badr was, you know, a source of big support. The morale of the Muslims had gone high after Badr. They had defeated Quraysh. Three times their number. So in the whole of Arabian Peninsula, the Muslims, you know, got a very high name. But now, now the wind was gone. The conditions were changed. Now this 60 ayat long, you know, there is a discourse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are comments. What are the weaknesses, O Muslims? You should see the weaknesses in your ranks. You must mend your ways because... The struggle is still going on. You will have to face harder positions, harder situations. So whatever weaknesses have come to the surface, you must try to remedy them. This is the basic subject of the coming 60 ayat. I can't say how many of them we shall be able to read today. Why is Ghadawta min Ahlikat? And just recall, O Prophet wasallam, when you left your family in the early morning, you were assigning the Muslims their stations and positions. You are posting them for the battle. Wallahu samiyun alim, and Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Is hammat ta'ay fatane min kuman tafshala? It's very noteworthy that Allah subhanahu wa taala didn't even mention the Munafiqeen here. The bigger event was that 300 deserted. But that incident has not been discussed here. As if they are not worth mentioning. Instead, among the Muslims, the remaining 700, two small groups were there who showed some weakness. They have been mentioned here. Is Hammad Tai Fatane Minkum and Tafshala? When two parties of you were about to lose heart, they were Banu Harsha and Banu Salma, two families. They saw, you know, the difference in number and for some time, for temporary, temporarily, there was weakness in their wills. Is Hammad Tai Fatah Amin Kuru Tafshala, Wallahu Waliyuhuma. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their protector, supporter, helper, they shouldn't have felt weak when Allah was on their side. And people who really believe they should have all their trust in Allah. Not in the numbers, not in the arms. All their trust should be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyhow, it was a temporary phase. They then made up their mind, they stood, they remained there, they fought with the Muslims. And they were very proud later on that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned us in Quran. And he has referred to us as Hammad Tai Fatane Minkum. They are from amongst you, O Muslims. They are not the hypocrites. They are not the munafiqeen. They are 
two groups from among yourself. So they were very proud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used these words about us. Is Hamad Ta'ifatani bin Kum and Tafshala. Wallahu waliyuhuma wa ala Allah for Yatawaka is moving on. Wallakad Nasarakum Wallahu be Badrin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had helped you in Badr. It was only one year before. Wantu Mazilla. And you were very weak. Very weak. Because at Badr Muslims didn't have even arms. I think only seven had swords with them. Only seven of them. Because actually when they started from Medina, they never knew that they had to fight an army. They thought that we have to go after a caravan. So they didn't need the, all the arms with them. And Allah had helped you at Badr. Although you were very weak. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you should have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can be really grateful to Him. اِسْتَقُولُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ When you were saying to the mu'min, to the believers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أَلَنْ يَكْفِيَكُمْ وَيُمِدَّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِسَلَاسَةِ عَلَافِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُنزِلِينَ Is it not sufficient for you that your Lord helps you with 3,000 angels who will be sent down. So that was a good tiding for the Muslims that the Prophet gave. That don't fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send. If you have to confront 3,000 people of the enemy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you with 3,000 angels. Bala, why not? Because this glad tiding was given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ratifying it. Why not? In tasbiru wa tattaku, our Prophet had said 3,000. Instead, if you show patience and perseverance, and if you, O Muslims, have the real taqwa, wa yatukum min farihim haza, if your enemy attacks you straight off, this very moment, yumdidkum rabbukum bi khabsati ala fi minal malaikati musawwimeen, your Lord will help you with 5,000 angels who will come with their own standards, with their own marks. وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا مُشْتَعَلَكُمْ And Allah made it only a good tiding, good news for you. وَلِتَطْمَئِنَّ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ So that your hearts are reassured with this. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ بِإِلَّا بِرِنْدِ اللَّهِ And there can be no help except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't need to send 5,000 angels also. Allah can help without any angel, without sending any angel. He can act only by saying be and it becomes. But you know for, for reassurance to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send 5,000 angels. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ There can be no help except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is all powerful, who is all wise. لَيَقْتَعَ تَرَفًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا and Allah wanted to cut off a part and portion of the non-believers or to put them to humiliation so that they had to return back frustrated. Oh Muhammad it is not for you to decide. Actually what happened when the Prophet himself was wounded and blood gushed out of his cheek and two of his teeth were martyred and when much of bleeding was had happened and he felt weak and there was unconsciousness for some time then a few words came out of his mouth كَيْفَ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا خَزَبُوا وَجْهَ نَبِيِّهِمْ بِالدَّمْ How will Allah guide a people who colored the face of their Prophet with blood. Because the whole face of the Prophet was red with blood, because the, you know, the wound was here on the cheek. The cheekbone, you know, that was broken, and then from there the blood was gushing and the teeth was, were, were broken also. So when he said, How can Allah guide a people who have colored and painted the face of their Prophet and Messenger of Allah with blood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it's none of your business. 
it's up to us. We shall decide whether to punish them or to guide them or to accept their tawbah. This is our, our exclusive, our domain. It's not your domain. Laisa laka bin al-amr shayyun. You don't have any authority in your hand. Mind you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or yatuba alayhim, it is up to Allah. He may relent on them. He may accept their tawbah. Or you ask them, or he may punish them. Find them zalimud. There is no doubt they are unjust. They have committed aggression against the Prophet. They deserve punishment. But maybe they repent, and then Allah may relent on us. So it is not for you to decide. It is for us to decide. And you know, please note what happened. The same Khalid ibn Walid. who was the main reason of all what happened there he was given the title of sword of allah khalid un saif un min sayf allah khalid is a sword from the swords of allah and that title was given by muhammad himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he later on he accepted islam laysa laka min al-amr shay aw yatub alayhim aw yu'azzibuhum fa innahum zalimun walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard And to Allah belongs whatever is in the skies and heaven and whatever is on earth. Yafro li man yasha wa yazdim man yasha. The same ayah that came in the end of the Surah Al-Baqarah. He forgives to whom he likes, and he punishes whom whosoever he likes. Wallahu ghafur rahim. And Allah is essentially ghafur. He is forgiving and he is merciful. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تأكلوا الربا. Oh you who profess to believe, don't eat, don't devour usury. أزافر مزافا doubled and redoubled. واتقوا الله and have fear of Allah. Fear Allah's punishment. لا لكم تفلحون so that you can prosper. Now because this ayah was revealed in the third year, this is the preliminary injunction about riba. The ayat with which we have studied in Surah Al-Baqarah, they were revealed in the ninth year after Hijra. That is the final commandment about riba. So this is the preliminary first commandment about riba here. But the Quran and the Tawheed that will kafir in. Now just see, in this surah in Surah Al-Ali Imran, there are thirty-one ayat which were revealed in the ninth year after Hijra, when the deportation of the Christians of Najran came, and they are. Included in this surah, most of which of which was revealed in the third year, the ayat regarding the final prohibition of riba were revealed in the ninth year of after Hijra, and they are included in Surah Al-Baqarah, which was revealed in the second year after Hijra. So the resemblances, similarities between these surah, you can you know they are coming up and they are adding up. وَتَقُولُونَ وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ and compete with each other why with each other to get the forgiveness from your lord wa jannatin and to get and reach the paradise arzuha samawati wal ard whose breadth is just like the breadth of the heavens and the earth qaidat lil muttaqin and that has been prepared for those having taqwa alladhina yunfiquna fi as-sarra who are those who have taqwa الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء، who keep on expending and spending their money for the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in prosperity as well as adversity، والكاظمين الغيزة، who can restrain their anger، والعافين عن الناس، who forgive the who are forgiving for humanity towards people، والله يحب المحسنين and Allah loves Such good doers. Well, the Nizam Falu, Fahishatan, 
and those who when they commit something which is indecent by by mistake by error something is committed by them which is indecent aw zalamu anfusahum or they do wrong to themselves in any other way zakarullah instantly immediately they remember allah allah comes to their mind fastaghfiru li dhunubihim then they repent what we have done and they ask forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala for their sins wa may yaghfiru dhunuba illa illa allah and who can forgive the sins except allah subhanahu wa taala himself wa lam yusirru ala ma fa'alu wa hum ya'lamun and then don't, they don't insist and persist in this sin mistake is committed the prophet has been reported to have said in one hadith kullu bani adam khata'un wa khairul khata'in tawwabun all mankind are those 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 who commit errors khata'un they go on committing errors but among these khata'un those who commit error among them the best are those who repent who revert to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who repent on what they have done and they again make a firm resolve that they will not again commit this this act and this sin fastaghfiru li dhunubihim wa may yaghfiru dhunuba illa allah wa lam yusirru ala ma fa'alu wa hum ya'lamun knowingly they do not insist and persist in that sin ulai ka jazaahum maghfiratun mir rabbihim wa jannatun tajri min tahtihi al-anhar they are the people for whom are is the the forgive forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min their lord from their lord wa jannatun and for them are the gardens tajri min tahtihi al-anhar beneath which the rivers are flowing khalidin fiha they will dwell in them forever wa nam ajul amilin and how good is the reward how excellent is the reward for those people who do good works qad khalat min qablikum sunanun fasiru fil ard so many examples similar examples have passed before you qad khalat min qablikum sunan you are not the first nation and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not the first messenger so many messengers were sent before so many nations you know what happened to the people of hud and people of saleh they were in this, this very arabian peninsula these both nations so qad sunan qad khalat min qablikum sunan un fasiru fil ard you should travel in the land fanzuru ka farqan aqibatul mukazzabin and see for yourself what was the end and end of the believers belayers of the truth who who didn't accept iman at the hands of their messengers what happened to them they were just you know finished hada bayanun lin nas wa hudam wa mu'izatun lil muttaqin this quran is a manifesto for mankind and this is the guidance and this is the exhortation and admonition for the god fearing wala tahinu wala tahzanu antum al alauna in kuntum mu'minin because there was you know a temporary defeat although finally allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again gave the muslims the victory the army had to retire had to go back the army of the quraish abu sufyan had to take the back back to his army but you know temporarily there was defeat and there were wounds inflicted so many were injured so actually allah sar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning because due to that there was the morale had gone down so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala tahinu wala tahzanu don't be disheartened don't get disheartened and don't be grieved wantum al alon we make a solemn so solemn promise with you you will be the supreme on earth you will be above others you will be supreme in kuntu mu'minin only if you remain mu'min if you have real faith if you have the real conviction not the verbal attestation only the verbal attestation we have and we are more than a billion we have no say in the international affairs in the world affairs of the world nothing we carry no weight more than a billion and meaning nothing because we have only verbal attestation we say that we believe in allah we say with our tongue ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah we have the conviction look to our character our attitudes our pursuits our values after what we are running that will tell us what is the real faith what is the real belief what are our real goals in life 
what are our what is our value structure so wala this aya is very important because this proves for sure that majority of the muslims of this time are not movements had they been movement they would have been they should have been supreme on earth wala tahinu either you have to say that allah subhanahu wa taala has told a lie maaz allah wala tahinu wala tahzanu antumul alauna in kuntum mu'minin you will be supreme you will be above all if you are mu'min and we are not so we are not mu'min e yamsakum qarhun faqad massal qawma qarhun mislu if a wound has has been inflicted upon you o muslims 70 of you have been martyred to the whole community as if just as a wound to an individual this was a big wound to the community to the ummah 70 and one of them was hazrat hamza radhiyallahu ta'ala an the other one was hazrat musa bin umair radhiyallahu ta'ala an who was the emissary of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was sent from bakka to teach the people of madina quran and he was also martyred in yamsakum qarhun faqad massal qawma qarhun bismu if you have been inflicted with a wound your enemies the other people they had also got the infliction of a wound wal tilka al ayam nudabilu ha bain nas and these days we keep on rotating them between the people ups and downs downs and ups not no nation can have the same condition throughout ups and downs come and go in the history in the life of a nation and a community tilka al ayam nudabilu ha bain nas wala ya'lam Allah alladhina amanu so that Allah bi Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he sees who is real mu'min if there is no adversity if there are no testing if there are no tribulations how will it be proved who is a real muslim in conditions of ease and comfort everybody can claim everybody can have tall claims of iman and islam it is actually on some testing on some trial that it can be proved who is the real mu'min so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make it manifest who is the real mu'min wa yattakhira minkum shuhada and he wanted to get from you some witnesses some martyrs so that they become the witnesses wallahu la yuhibbu zalimin it is not that allah loves these zalimi in this kuffar allah doesn't love love doesn't like these non believers but actually if he allowed this infliction of this wound to you as an ummah this has also some wisdom behind it allah subhanahu wa taala could compensate for the mistake which was committed by 35 he can who could condone the mistake and this you know infliction this wound would not have come to you but allah subhanahu wa taala allowed it why so that number one he wanted to see to that it should become manifest who is the real mu'min who are those who are stand fast who are perseverance who can show perseverance and number two he wanted to have some witnesses from amongst you allah doesn't like these kuffar these mushrikeen wala yumahris allah alladhina amanu wa yamhaq al kafirin and that allah may purge those who shall enter the garden wa yushir purge those who believe and may blot out the disbelieving the disbelievers he wanted to to liquidate the disbelievers ab hasib tum man tadkhul al jannah this aya is very noteworthy this is aya number 142 of surah ali ibrahim and there was aya number 214 214 of surah al baqarah starting with the same words ab hasib tum man tadkhul al jannah wa lamma yatikum masal al ladina khalaw min qablikum massathum al ba'sa wa al darra wa zulzilu حتى يقول الرسول والذين امنوا معه متى نصر الله الا ان نصر الله قريب did you think you will enter paradise although up till now those tests and trials have not come to you which came to the people who were before you the same aya here a small smaller aya but the meanings are the same ab hasibtum an tadkhulu al jannah oh muslims did you think that you will get entry into the gardens of paradise walamma ya'lam billahi alladhina jahadu minkum and up till now allah allah taala has not seen who amongst you are the real people who make jihad wa ya'lam as-sabirin 
And Allah wants to see who are the people who have patience, who show perseverance, who are ready to take all the risks. This is to be shown up, up this is to be seen. Even now, until now. You had been longing for death. This is the reference to the people who said, we want martyrdom, we want, we want shahada, we want to go in the field and have an open combat. Why should we, like cowards, we should sit within the walls of the city and defend the city from within? Why not go? Because our goal is to have shahada. We want martyrdom. So actually this is this ayah is referring to it. It's easy to say with mouth and your tongue that you want to be martyred. But when death comes really, then it is a different matter. You had been longing for death, death of martyrdom. Before you had met it. But now you have seen it with your own eyes. So death is something very bitter. It's not something very pleasant. So you, none should long for death. We should always pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, save us from the trials. We are not equal to your trial. وَلَا تُحَمِّلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَبَلْتَهُ وَلَا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْ لَا مَا لَا تَوْقَتَ لَنَا بِهِ the, the prayer which we studied last night, which, with which ends the Surah Al-Baqarah. لَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَلْقَوْهُ فَقَدْ رَعَيْتُمُوهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْذُرُونَ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ When you know the Prophet was wounded and for some time he became unconscious also, so the, the rumor got spread that Muhammad has died. And there was a negative effect on some of the Sahaba of this humor. If Muhammad has died, for whom should we continue the fight? It's no use. It's no use continuing fighting. For whom? He has died. He's dead. Even this happened to Hazrat Umar ta'ala. He threw away his sword. He was sitting. But then some Sahaba said to him, if he has died for this mission, why shouldn't we die for this mission? And then again he rose up and he got his sword. And then again he joined the horse and started fighting. But this was a temporary effect on, on Hazrat Umar even Nabi Allah Ta'ala. So now there is a comment on this. Rama Muhammadun illa Rasul. Muhammad is nothing else but a Rasul. He is a messenger of Allah. Al Khalat will come to Rasul. And before him, so many messengers of Allah have passed. There was Nuh, there was Hud, there was Saleh, there was Lut, there was Shaib, there was Ibrahim, there was Musa, there was Isa. So many prophets and, and messengers of Allah have passed. Baba Muhammadullah Rasul Khad Khalak bin Kablihi Rasul. Afaim Matao Kotela. So if he dies or if he is killed, he is slain, he is martyred. And قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَقَابِكُمْ Will you return back on your heels? Will you leave Islam? Will you leave Imam? Will you give up all these things and go back on your heels? وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَقِبَيْهِ Whosoever goes back on his heels فَلَا يَدُنَ اللَّهَ شَيَا He will not be harming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cannot harm anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cannot give any harm to Allah. وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the requisite reward to those who are really grateful. Who are grateful that he gave them Islam. He gave them Iman. He gave them Quran. And he, they should remain steadfast to Islam. And they should sacrifice. Keep ready to sacrifice everything for the cause of Allah. It is not possible for any soul to die without the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can die. Kitabam Wajjala. And this has been recorded, pre-recorded, fixed period. Everybody has a fixed life and it is pre-recorded. Kitabam Wajjala. Mama Yurid Sawaba Dunya Nutihi Minha. Whosoever wants to have the reward of dunya, please don't get offended. 
all of us are included in this category. Our all struggle, our all work that is aimed at getting some comforts, some luxuries of this world. We are after this world and its good things, so to say. Its luxuries, its comforts, its amenities, its name, its position, everything. My unit, sawab of dunya, sawab of what? Sawab of your deeds, of your actions, of your struggle, of your hard work. The reward of your hard work. My unit, sawab of dunya, lotehi minaha. Whosoever has decided that he intends to have all the reward of his work here in this world, we shall give here. For my unit, sawab al akhirat in lotehi minaha. Whosoever has fixed his goal to be akhirat. And he wanted the sawab, he wants the sawab of akhirah, the reward of akhirah, we will shall give him from that. And we shall give the proper reward to those who are really grateful. And how many, so many Ambiya and so many prophets have passed, who fought, with whom fought so many godly people. Just as we had, you know, the Talut and Jalut, the, the, the battle between Talut and Jalut. There were Mormons, there were believers who were, who were fighting the enemies. So many prophets have passed with whom people who believed in Allah, who were Rabbi Yun, who were the people of God, they went to war with them, along with them. They neither disheartened, they were neither disheartened on what happened to them, what harms came to them, fi sabirillah, in the way of Allah, wa ma gharufu, nor they were weakened, wa ma stakanu, nor they, they submitted, they surrendered. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin, Allah loves such patient people, such persevering people. Wa ma kana qawlahum illa an qalu rabbana qfir lana zunubana, the same. Same dua as the people who were fighting along with Hazrat Talut, they had prayed. And their prayer was only this. Illa an qalu that they said, Rabbana qfir lana zunubana, O our Lord, forgive for us our mistakes, our sins, wa israfana fi amrena, and our extravagance in our matters, in our affairs, wa sabbit aqdamana, and make our feet firm. Vansurna ala al-qawmil kafirin and help us against the people, those people who don't believe, who are unbelievers. Fa'atahumu allahu sawab al-dunya wa husna sawab al-akhirah. So Allah gave them the reward of this world also and the best reward of akhirah, of the hereafter. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah loves such good doers, people who do such good deeds. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ تُطِعُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَرُدُّوكُمْ عَلَىٰ عَقَابِكُمْ فَتَنْقَلِ بُوْ خَاسِرِينَ Oh, you who believe, this ayah has also, you know, passed before, nearly with the same wordings. إِنْ تُطِعُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا If you obey those who are unbelievers, who have rejected Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his da'wah, if you obey them or if you, if you act upon their advices, يَرُدُّوكُمْ عَلَىٰ قَابِكُمْ They will take you back on your heels. فَتَنْ قَلِبُوا خَاسِرِينَ And then you will turn losers. You will be in loss. بَلِ اللَّهُ مَوْلَاكُمْ On the other side, Allah is your protector. Allah is your sustainer. Allah is your helper. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ النَّاسِرِينَ And He is the best of the helpers. سَنُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْرُعْبِ Very soon, we shall cast into the hearts of these unbelievers terror, terror and fear for you. بِمَا أَشْرَكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Because, because of that, that they associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such, such deities, forged deities, about whom Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent down any authority, any certificate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not certified that such and such gods are also my partners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not certified that I have taken such and such person as my son. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given any certificate to anything, anybody that he is my equal, my partner. Actually, this is very important because no book which claims to be divine, which claims to have revelation, has any basis of shirk. Fatu, Fatu bi kitabiko. Bring forth your book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran challenges the mushrikeen of Makkah. If you have something written, any book, any scripture, from any of your gods, if you claim that it is from Allah, it is from, it, it has come after revelation, well bring it and show us. Where is, is it written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken such and such, such and such people or such and such persons as partners with him and associates with him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given the authority or certificate to anything that he is his partner. Because this is the biggest crime, therefore the terror and the robe and the fear of, of you, O Muslims, will be cast into their, into, into their hearts. وَبَيْسَ مَسْوَ الظَّالِمِينَ وَمَا بَاهُمُ النَّارِ And now their abode is fire. And that is a very bad place, resting place for the evildoers. وَبَيْسَ مَسْوَ الظَّالِمِينَ وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ Now this is the most important comment. That you Muslims, you cannot complain to us for this affliction that you got, for this wound that was inflicted on your body. It is your own doing. It is due to your own mistake. You can't blame us. You can't complain to us. We had given you the victory as we had promised. وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعَدَهُ Allah had fulfilled with you His promise. Is تَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ When you were extirpating exterminating them with his command, with his help, with his command. You were killing them. You had routed them. They were running. They were on their heels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had fulfilled his promise. وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعَدَهُ اِسْتَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ حَتَّى اِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ But when, when you loosened the discipline, you got loosened. Now this looseness, what I understand is the looseness of discipline, of sabrata. Because the commander at that place, who was heading those 50 archers, he never permitted anybody to go and leave that place. So they broke the discipline. Fashil means weakness. You showed the weakness. I would not weakness individually, weakness as a group. Because the group is only powerful when it is disciplined, when it is cohesive, when it is bunyaru barsus, then it is powerful. And when the discipline is loose, then it becomes very weak. Fahta idha fashiltu wa tanazatum fil amr. And you disputed about the matter. Your commander was saying not to leave. And you left. And you said that the Prophet had said that if all of us are killed, and you see the birds are eating our flesh. Even then you don't leave this place. But now the situation is contrary. There is victory for the Muslims. There is no need of staying here. So they left that place. So that was the dispute. Although because the commander was not permitting, they shouldn't have left that place. Then it was duty for them to, to obey. As the Prophet says, Man ata'ani faqad ata'allah, wa man asani faqad asallah. وَمَنْ أَتَعَى أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ أَتَعَى أَمِي وَمَنْ أَسَى أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ أَسَى أَمِي Whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. Whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. Whosoever obeys an Amir appointed by me, he obeys me. And whosoever disobeys an Amir, who has been appointed by me, actually he is disobeying me. So it amounted to a disobedience of the Prophet. Although actually, for them, it was not a disobedience of the Prophet, but it was a disobedience to the commander. But that commander's own disobedience, according to the saying of the Prophet, amounts to the disobedience to the Prophet And you disobeyed after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed you what you like and what you love. Most of the Mufassirin, 
دے سی دیٹ اٹ مینس دی بوٹی دی مال غنیمت دی انفال دی اسپوائلز آف دی وار دے وین دین دے رین فروم دیئر پوزیشن ٹو کلیکٹ دی بوٹی ٹو کلیکٹ دی اسپوائلز آئی ڈس ایک دی ہیئر بیکاز یو نو آفٹر دی بیٹل آف بدر دی لا اباؤٹ انفال واز گیون whether somebody had collected something or not it was irrelevant now all the booty all the spoils all the infar were to be collected and then distributed equally the double share was to go to the riders who have some horse or camel also with them they used to feed them and single share for the people for the footman whosoever is a soldier foot soldier so actually there was no need of their leaving that place to collect the spoils it was absolutely irrelevant so what they loved was victory and i have the example in surah as-saff wa ukhra tuhibbunaha nasrun min allah wa fathun qareeb actually after seeing this victory they loosened their their resolve was loosened and this resulted in in, in the loosening of their discipline and this resulting in that they disputed with their abir and that was that became the cause for the big defeat temporary although it was but it was a big defeat no doubt that was the result of all this but this was all your own doing it is not from allah only allah didn't obstruct it allah let it happen allah gave gave the permission that it happen this is also based on a wisdom so that you have a lesson for future so that you can mend your ways for the times to come otherwise if the punishment didn't come you could be very loose in your in, in your behavior afterwards also so it was to teach you a lesson that allah subhanahu wa taala didn't condone your mistake but anyhow what happened was due to your mistake it's very important and very profound aya walaka sadaqakum allah wa'dahu istahusunahu bi iznihi hatta idha fashiltum wa tanazatum fil amr وَعَسَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تَحِبُّونَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا Amongst you are those who intend to have this world. Fatah is also for this world. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ And there are among you those who really want to have Akhirah. ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned your faces from them. When the Quraysh were running, the Muslims were chasing them. but now when there was a the charge from from the back from behind of the cavalry of the quraish now the faces of the muslims were turned back so now the tables were turned and now the quraish were chasing them so this was summa sarafakum anhum le yabtaliyakum so as to put you into a test it was a testing for you walaqad afa ankum but allah subhanahu wa taala has forgiven you your mistake has been condoned allah subhanahu wa taala will not bring to you, take you to task for this mistake now here and here and now we have we have pardoned you we have forgiven you wallahu zu fadlin alal mu'minin and allah is very bountiful for the mu'minin for the believers is tu sa'idun wa la tarbun ala ahadin minkum when you were ascending going up the mountain and you were not paying any heed to anybody when rasul yadukum fi ukhrakum and in your rear the messenger was calling you what happened you know there was panic and in that panic most of the muslims ran towards the uhud mountain so that they can save themselves by going up the mountain now they are running towards the mountain climbing the mountain the prophet is is is, is in the rear he is calling them ilayya ya ibadallah where are you going come towards me o bondsmen of allah o servants of allah Come towards me, ilayya ya ibad Allah. Is to saduna walat almuna, but in such an emergency, you know, nobody has any idea of of the other. Everybody thinks about himself, his safety. Is to saduna. You were climbing the mountain, walat almuna ala ala ahdim, and you were not running back to take care of anybody else. But Rasul yaduku fi ukhraku. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was calling you from your rear. Fasabakum ghamman bi ghamman. Now there was grief after grief for you, the grief of the defeat, the grief of the wounding of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the grief of the rumor that the Prophet had been killed. 
سو گریف اوور گریف گریف آفٹر گریف لکیلا تحزن والا با فاتکم سو دیٹ یو بیکم سیزنڈ اینڈ ان دی فیوچر یو ڈونٹ گریو ایٹ وٹ ایور وی فالس یو ولا با صاحب کم اینڈ وٹ ایور از از یو یو وٹ ایور یو مس اینڈ وٹ ایور وی فالس یو واللہ خبیر بما تعملون اینڈ وٹ ایور یو آر ڈوئنگ اللہ از اویئر آف اٹ سم انزل علیکم من بعد الغم امنت النعاس اینڈ دین آفٹر ورڈز آفٹر دس اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی سینڈ ڈاؤن آن یو اسلمبر a security and peace and tranquility it so happened and in the war it was very unusual but some of the sahaba say we we felt like sleeping you know sleep comes only when there is contentment in the heart when there is conflicts within you you can't sleep so actually this was a blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah is mentioning it as such summa anzara alaykum min ba'd al-ghamm amanatan wa asa yakhsha ta'ifatan minkum A party among you was feeling sleepy. But I have told God, "Ah, but who man fuso?" There was another group also who were very thoughtful about themselves. What will happen to us? Who were who, who were trying to save their their souls? Yazul nur abillah ghair al hakte zand al jahiliya, and they were thinking about Allah. The the thoughts of jahiliya, which were not based on on reality. What has happened? Were we wrong? Is Muhammad not the not the messenger of Allah? What has happened? If he was really messenger of Allah, how could this happen to him? How could this happen to us? So you know, Shaitan, Allah the Yuvas was of his sudur in us. He puts so many ideas, and do these things come to without the intention of a person? These ideas cross your minds without your intending it. You have no control over this. So, Yazunnuna billahi ghair al-haqqa zand al-jahiliya. They were unjustly thinking about the thought of ignorance. Yaqooluna hallana bin al-amda bin shayi. Now, this is the saying of some of the munafiqeen. They said, is there, is there anything for us regarding the authority? Do we have some part in authority? What did they mean? Abdullah ibn Ubay said that we should defend the city from within the walls of the city. We are not in a position to go and confront the enemy in the open field. Now they thought that had this opinion been accepted, then we would not have suffered this, this disaster. Now we should have authority, our opinion should be respected, decisions should be made according to the opinion of the people because the decision was made exclusively by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he saw that some of the mu'minin some of the people especially the youth among them and as i told you especially especially those who couldn't go to badr now they wanted to have a chance to fight for the cause of allah so allah so the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he kept their their sentiments he he kept before him the sentiments of such mu'minin and sadiqin and he decided in the favor that we will go out and have the confrontation in the open field but then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them the victory this was not due to a mistake in in this decision this was due to the mistake of those 35 sahaba who who disobeyed the command of their commander so actually but now it's there was an occasion for the munafiqin to say hallana min al-amr bin shay Do we have any part in authority in the decision of the matters? Qul in the lamra kullahu billah. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, authority is totally with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Nobody has any authority. So what does it mean? Allah subhanahu wa taala owns the authority, and now His messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, He is His representative. He had the exclusive authority to decide. And you, if you have real belief, if you really believe in in Him, you must. accept him and accept his command and you must obey him with the from the depths of your hearts you fool of your fuzi mala yabdul lak o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are hiding in their hearts but they are not disclosing to you they are saying something else they mean something else what they mean yaqulun actually what they are saying 
دیٹ از لنا لو کان لنا من الامر شعیون ما قتلنا ہا ہونا اف وی ہیڈ سم سے ان دی افیئرس اف اور اوپینین واز ریسپیکٹڈ اف دی ڈسیجن واز میڈ اکارڈنگ ٹو اور ایڈوائس وی ووڈ ناٹ ہیو بین کلڈ ہیئر قل لو کنتم فی بیوتکم ٹیل دیم او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایون اف یو ور ان یور ہومز اینڈ ہاؤسز لا برز الذین قتب علیہم القتل on whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written already that he will be killed he would have anyhow come to this place where he was to be killed la baraz allazina qutiba alayhim alqatl ila mawadi'ihim wherever they have been killed to date and uh, at which place they would have come here anyhow even they were in their houses and homes because the the decision of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cannot be obstructed by anybody by any policy by any decision by any means by any methods they, that has to be carried out the baraz alladhina kutiba alayhim alqatl ila mawadi'ihim wala yabtil wala yabtali allah ma fi sudurikum and all this happened only allah wants to test what is in your hearts what is in your chest wala yumahsa ma fi qulubikum and he wants to purge whatever is in your hearts because if with iman there is some pollution of nifaq also it must be cleansed it must be cleared if iman and there is some weakness also these weaknesses should be cleansed and cleared so the purging of your hearts was the main issue wal yu mahsa ma fi qulubikum wallahu alimun bi dhati sudur and allah knows what is there in the chests of the people in the hearts of the people ان الذين تولوا منكم يوم التقى الجمعان ويرلي دوز هو ليفت ذا فيلد اند هو شورد ذير باكس تو ذا فايتنج اون ذات داي ان ويتش تو ارميز كونفرنتد ايتش اذر ان ما استظل لهم الشيطان اكشولي ات واز شيطان هو ميد ذيم سليب بت هي كود ميد ذيم سليب بباز ما كسبوا ديو تو سم اوف ذير اكشنز دي هاد دن سم سينز some they had committed some mistakes they had committed some weaknesses and due to those weaknesses shaitan could hold them and shaitan could ha- have some effect on them and could have some influence on them istadallahu shaitan using that influence he made them slip walaqad afa allahu anhum but about such people also allah declares here allah has already pardoned them allah has accepted their toba they will not be questioned about it now this the case is closed this case of ghazwatul uhud that is closed whosoever committed some weakness committed some mistake allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned it only so that you can rectify them you can purify your ranks you can rectify your weaknesses and mistakes but you know allah subhanahu wa taala will not punish them for these weak weaknesses and mistakes allah wala qad afa ankum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laqad afa Allahu anhum Allah has pardoned them please note here that among those people who left the battlefield was also Hazrat Usman radhiyallahu ta'ala and people who are enemies of sahaba who don't who don't like sahaba anyhow they use this thing as a propaganda against Hazrat Usman up till now radhiyallahu ta'ala but you know the reply given by one of the sahaba in those days when some of the people who who rose in revolt against hazrat usman during the caliphate of hazrat usman رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ when they enumerated this charge also against him that he had fled the field on the day of uhud so he is not trustworthy and he is not actually he is he is not uh, mustahid and he is not capable of having this high office of khilafa the, the, the answer given was allah had pardoned him allah had given declared the pardoning to all those people he was not alone there were many because there was panic the, this the, the situation was so extraordinary what happened was so instantaneous that you know you so to say what we call involuntarily some of the people left the field they were quickly asked so hazrat usman رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ was also one of them but here allah declares wala qad afa allah anhum allah has already pardoned them and forgiven them inna allah ghafurur halim 
verily and definitely and surely Allah is ghafoor, He is merciful and He is forbearing. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.